college students. So I want to discuss this uh, topic of electric potential in circuits. You know, in my teaching experience, I found that a lot of students are confused about finding the potential within the circuit, right? For example, you have to find the potential difference between D and F in the circuit, right? How do you find? So let's discuss this. This is a lecture on understanding how to identify potential of a point or the potential difference between two points in any circuit. Okay, So I kept a very simple circuit, but you can apply this concept on complicated circuits as well. Okay, So this is a battery of 12 volts and the there are two resistances you can see in parallel to it and I have marked some points. The point number A, B, D, C, E, F. Okay, six points are marked. Okay, and what I will do now is I will keep on doing some small quizzes to make you understand the concept of identifying potential of a point in a circuit. Simple circuit, but you, you will realize you can apply this concept to a complicated circuit or complex situation. Okay, because this is a basic concept that you must know about a circuit when you do Kirchhoff's voltage law, Kirchhoff's current law. Or for that matter, when you do questions which have capacitor introduced in these circuits, right? You could have a capacitor here. Then how do you find the potential? Okay. So let me just discuss the points and let's identify the potential. Let's talk about point number A and B. So I'm going to write the points here. You can see the point A and the point B. What is the potential difference between point A and B? Right? So when I say potential difference, I am referring to the magnitude. You can see when you move from A to B, you actually have a 12 volt battery, which is, you know, which is something you need to pass through. Okay. So potential across A and B, which is nothing but the terminals of the battery is 12 volts. Okay. So we are not referring to Kirchhoff's voltage law that we go like this, there is a gain of 12 volts or we go like this, there is a gain of minus loss of minus 12 volts. If you want to go that way, then from potential drop from A to B is minus 12 volts. You lost potential from A to B. Let's talk about the potential drop across D and C. I'm picking up very simple examples. D and C. Now D and C are connected to the, sorry, are connected parallel to the battery or you can see the potential. Uh, so this is a parallel resistance to the battery. So the battery is providing it 12 volt potential. Okay, So D and C, again the drop is going to be minus 12 volts. So I am using the terminology of Kirchhoff's voltage law for a while, right, to make your life slightly simple. Okay, let's go to the third uh, column, right, which is nothing but R2. And this time the question is, what is the potential across E and F? Now you can see in D and E, the points were here, right? The points were here and here. But in R2, the points have not been shown here. Okay. The points have come closer to the resistor. Now, in most of the numericals we do, the wire, this wire, okay, the conducting wire, resistance is zero. Okay, so from D, if you start moving like this, there is no potential drop. There is no potential drop if you move like this. Also, if you move like this, There is no potential drop because this is a wire. There is no resistance. If there is no resistance, there is no IR. So, in fact, if you notice this point E is connected to D. The point E is connected to D. There is no resistance between them. And therefore, the drop of potential here is 0. Which is what I have written as V is equal to 0. Also, notice if you notice the point C. C and F, 
C and F, they are also at same potential. Because there is no resistance, this has no resistance. Okay, so therefore the potential drop across C and F is equal to zero. Remember that. Okay, so so this was easy, right? And also one could argue 12 volt is also parallel to R2, and therefore the potential drop across R2 is minus 12 volt, which is a drop. You lose the from, you know, from higher to lower point. Okay, so I will write this as potential drop across E and F is minus 12 volts, right? Now I will slightly make the situation a bit complicated for you. And how do I do that is this. Now tell me what is the potential difference between F and A. These two points. So I am giving you a circle. A and F. What is the potential difference? Right Now they are so widely spaced. Right? So A is, a is here. F is in some other part of the circle. So one could say we will use Kirchhoff's law we will or we will use series and parallel concept and be able to find the potential drop i am just telling you without doing that how do you do that right you don't need to do a series parallel grid if you notice the point a is connected to 12 volts the point a is connected to 12 volts right here start moving from a like this here the potential drop is zero because there is no resistance here. Then move forward from D. D, by the way, D is also at 12 volts because it is connected to the point number A. And there is no drop. So this is at 12 volts. There is no potential drop. And therefore, D also is at 12 volts. If there was a potential drop, D would show you a lesser value. Move forward. No potential drop, no potential drop, no potential drop. E. E is also connected to D directly, right? So D and E. E is also at 12 volt, right? And what is C connected to? Okay, so this is the point you were referring to, sorry, F, right? What is F connected to? F is connected to C. C is connected to B. What is the potential of B? Zero volt. Right? What is the potential of C? Zero volt. What is the potential of F? Zero. Because they are connected without a wire that has a resistance. So if you see B, C, F, all are at the same potential. A, D, E, all are at the same potential. Got it? So, which means the potential from A to F, this is at 12 volt, this is at 0 volt, the potential drop is what? A to F is also minus 12 volt. Okay, there is a drop in potential. This is a difference between them. Okay, so this is final potential 0. Let's consider two more points. Okay, let's consider the point number B and then let's consider the point number E. Okay, so I have to find the potential drop across B and E. Okay, now how do you do this potential drop across B and E? B as you know is connected to the negative terminal which is generally considered to be zero. So this is B. Start moving from here. No drop. IR is equal to 0 from here to here and then move from C, move from C till F. No potential drop. There is no resistor. And then move upwards, right? So we know this also is at 0 potential. F, C and B are at 0 potential. E is at 12. So you started from 0 volts. And you moved up and you reached a point which is 12 volts, which is again 
right? So the answer is if you move from B to E, your answer is plus 12 volts. You can, you so this whole wire, okay, let me give one more example. From D to E, if you consider D to E this wire, there is no potential drop. Therefore, the potential of D and E are identical. I can directly draw a wire and connect them. You know, I don't, so this all structure of rectangle is just a way to represent a circuit. Otherwise, from D to E, if E is here, you can also draw a straight line. Whereas what we do is this, right? It is one and the same thing. It's a wire without resistance. In fact, in this situation also, it's a wire without resistance. So if you see wire between two points, though these two points are equipotential. You will see certain questions which are coming in entrance examination where in a circuit, this type of wire is there, right? This is going to do a short circuit, okay? The potential between these two points is zero. There is no potential uh, difference. So when you see a simple circuit, first start understanding how to find the potential difference. If I tell you what is the potential difference between M and N, right? So you will say I found the potential from D to C, D to C as minus 12. What about M to N? If you talk about M to N, it is one and the same thing because D and M, D and M are connected by a wire where there is no potential drop, IR. So there is no zero potential drop, there is a zero potential drop. So the point number M is also at 12 volts. So you have, you have a situation where D is at 12 and you start moving from D to M you see there is no potential drop. So the till the end of this resistor, whatever point you select, the potential drop is zero. And therefore, all these points are at 12 volt. Okay. Once you reach here, the potential actually starts dropping because you have a resistor. So these are connecting wires. These are connecting wires. These are not resistors. They have no resistance. These connecting wires, which connect one point to another, are called connecting wires. They have no resistance of their own. If they have no resistance, there is no drop, right? Otherwise, if this would have a resistance of one ohm, sorry, if there is a drop of one volt here, moving from the point A to D, when I start from 12 volt, I move and there is a drop of 1 volt in this wire because it has a resistance. The potential of D will become 11 volt because there is a drop. And now I can show that resistance as 1 ohm. But since there was no resistance earlier, the potential of D was 12 volts. Now there is a 1 volt drop in the wire. It's a poor quality wire. It is consuming the voltage of the battery. Battery is capable of giving 12 volts. We want the whole 12 volt to go to the electrical elements. We don't want wastage in these connecting wires, right? This also is a connecting wire, connecting wire, connecting wire, connecting wire. We don't need anything like that. So I hope this concept has got ingrained in your mind. Please watch this video very carefully. It's a very simple uh, technique to identify the potential within a circuit at a point, for example, you know, this point A is at 12 volt with respect to the you know, lower potential point, which is a negative terminal of the battery. So identifying potential inside a circuit is very, very important. You can go to my playlist. It has, uh, I think, the concepts of potential divider. That is another concept you must know, right? So I'll give you the link for the playlist of electric circuits. A lot of conceptual questions, a lot of neat practice questions, a lot of JE mains practice questions, a lot of conceptual discussions, a lot of lectures, a lot of reasoning assertion questions, live recorded classes. The main idea is that you should develop a scientific mindset. That is, you should be able to understand the explanation. 
answers are written on websites you can go but who explains you that you cannot get an explanation of physics just like that you need someone to explain you right in detail right we can do it at at very you know superficial level but idea is to give you detail of what we are doing right? it's then the physics will get ingrained in your mind so focus on concepts strengthen your concepts do small small questions and then go to complicated questions thank you very much for your time and don't forget to subscribe to this channel